item. Uh, will be allowed to do so. Uh, those individuals that wanted to address the board and it's not an agenda item, which meaning that will be concerned in this grievance hearing, uh, will not be allowed to speak. Uh, I have uh, That's what they did to me last time. one public comment here from Valencia Robinson. Um, and She's the one that bought her kid. You didn't indicate it this was made concerning the hearing or not. So, uh, Ms. Robinson, if you're here, would you step forward? I'm not here. Okay. So is it pertaining to the grievance here? Yes. Okay. No, it's not. It was not, not uh, what's going on today. But oh, no, it's, it's not. something okay. different. I'm sorry. All right. So, I um, guess it's a general item. Lauren, it's a grievance. Um, since you wanted to... Uh, Yeah, we, we do have a, a board meeting on March 24th. If you have some, some I'll first, come back to that one. Uh, so if you'd like to, you have some concerns, you'd be more than welcome to speak at that time. Okay. Okay. So I do have four individuals here that uh, are going to join the like? board uh, with some concerns. Um, I've got, I placed them in alphabetical order. Uh, so uh, first up will be. All board meetings are open to the public, and uh, the 30-minute open form is divided equally among uh, they don't know what the persons who wish to address the board. No presentation shall exceed five minutes. The board will respond to specific factual information <sighs> or recitation of existing policy may be furnished in response to inquir inqu inquiries. But the board shall not deliberate or decide regarding any subject that is not included on the agenda posted with the notice of the meeting. Anyone wishing to address the board in open form, uh, of course, should complete this form. And uh, I have these four individuals that are going to speak. So As I said before, the uh, they're in alphabetical order. And first up is Sherilyn Haynes. I thought we were going to do our... Ma'am, this is totally out of order. We end up in federal court. You don't, you don't do a hearing of citizens at a, at a level three hearing. Good evening. It's a I'm here to speak on what happened October the 8th um, during the halftime show. It involves my son. He was the one, one of the three kids that was accused. I was at the game that night. <laughs> And as I look around, I see a couple of board members that was also there at the game. Mr. Spears, I know you're not going to ever miss a game. Mr. Evans, you're not going to miss a game. That night, my son and all his football players at the time was able to run back on the field at the halftime. At this game, you had five or more WISD coalition deaths. Oh, what is that? <coughs> that's, that's God. What? Has God saying this is out of order? Uh, well, I'm trying to work on it, but I get people, have people call me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's an it's a, Maybe no, it's, no, it's, uh, I think it's, 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 also, that night at this game, we had five or more WISD officers there. Now. Yeah, if was a do this what my three. son and his to address me? Uh, fellow football player yeah. team members, this is, this is, this, um, this is if what I'm they saying. did this what they totally were accused of mm -hmm. to this coach, dragging, hitting, pushing, kicking, why were they able to be, why were they able to run back out there 
on the field with their teammates. Why was WISD policemen, they was never involved. Two of the three children that was involved had to be escorted out the field by Mr. Chandler, not WISD. I spoke with Mandy, who is the head WISD policeman. He said he went in at halftime and asked the coaches, the students, everybody, what's going on? Nobody replied, nothing happened. I have a book right there with the head coach statement saying, I don't know if this coach fell on the ground or he was punched. I don't know. All of a sudden, you got a book full of contradicting statements. Nobody knows anything. It's our job as parents, teachers, educators, we are supposed to protect these kids. We are supposed to be proactive rather than reactive. Then the warden, ISD council told me during a level three that my son was involved in the second instance. Why would he be involved in the second instance when WISD police should have been involved in the first instance? It shouldn't have been the second instance. You have Landy ready. He's ready. All you got to do is go outside that door and say, Landy, we got a problem in here. He's ready to come handle it. It shouldn't have been a second instance. My son should be not facing a felony charge because Warren ISD didn't protect him. Because Mr. Chandler walked on that field and did not know that his Brother started the whole thing and walked my son, you fell my son. <laughs> you did all right. God gonna take you through hell to get you to heaven. I don't even want to sit down. I've been through 79 level three grievances all in the state of Texas. I gave you guys some attachments don't look like they gave them to you, but let me tell you what I gave you. I gave you the rules according to TASB for grievance hearings. One, two, and three. The superintendent cannot go any higher than a level two. According to TASB, according to TEA, and according to Wharton ISD FNG Local. So my question now becomes, because you know I got HISD education, why am I in a level four hearing? That doesn't sound right. As board members, which I wanted to be very, very bad, you took it over. According to these documents in this book, we went through a level three hearing on January 18th. I consider every fraction of this hearing illegal. It is illegal just as well as the person that heard the level two, which was what we should have been doing. See, I don't understand how you allow the principal to hear level two when it involves his brothers. That's about nepotism. That's a violation of state nepotism laws for government employees. Why do they work for this district? Think about it. I need you to think long and hard. Because if I went through a level three with your superintendent who had no business doing the level three, according to TEA, two days ago, you know what that tells me? That he circumvented the FNG local process. I also have a witness who's also filled out an affidavit. The superintendent been talking to y'all. Somebody on this board. And I don't want to discuss that until we get the courtroom. That when I spoke with you, the first thing you told me, Mr. President, we cannot discuss the level three. And we did not discuss a level three. But I know for a fact that your superintendent, once again, violated FNG Local because he communicated with the board members. Now, my name is Gary W. Monroe, not John F. Kennedy. I'm not coming around the grass in the old night to get shot because I'm not trusting that you will make a fair and impartial decision. So here's my thing. They're here, and they will not participate 
and do a legal hearing in a federal courtroom based on your documentation from your school district, you about as cooked as a turkey leg. Now let's stop playing the games. There's nothing in this book, your local, that even mentions these students. You have one email, and that was from your head football coach to your principal that said basically, student A, two initials, a J, and the other one, multiply. Said him and his father told the head coach that my clients beat up those coaches. I got affidavits from the father and the student, and they both say it's a lie. And that affidavit will stand up in a court of law. I also have it on visual recording because I'm a very smart guy. So the only statement you got in the book that even puts my guys in any awkward position has been refuted. Also in the book, if you pay close attention, a lot of the statements have the same handwriting. Something wrong. A lot of these statements were taken two weeks after my kids were already punished. Why were they still taking statements? Because you know what? The smoking gun is, I need each one y'all looking. No statements in this book match the statements that are in discovery for what the DA used to indict them. So the DA doesn't even have this book. I'm going to walk it out of there the same way you need to walk it out of here. So here's my thing. We're not participating in your illegal meeting. We're not participating. If you can tell me that the rules say that we're supposed to have a fourth level, we will participate. Outside of that, you're going to go black as black and white. What you want to do? They sent me word that y'all were going to walk circles around me tonight. I don't think so. this hill, when they call us, we're not doing it. He might be in that overflow room. because you have forced me to come here. I'm here because these young men are being railroaded. I used to sit in the chairs that y'all sit in, and I try to understand what was our mission statement, to lock up kids or to educate kids. When somebody do something wrong, I understand that. Discipline is required. My son was in that locker room, and my son told me what happened. And these facts do not add up. Each one of you took an oath, just like this gentleman said, just like exactly. when I was sitting in this chair. It's not right. I know you're afraid of being sued. I have it's seen coming. this stuff. It's wrong. I work in a place where they lock up kids. I know what failure looks like. And I don't want to see Warden be a part of sending more kids to the penitentiary. Because we want to cover up. I'm asking y'all to do the right thing. What if it was your child? Black, white, Hispanic? Don't matter. I don't care. It's wrong. No other way to look at it. Think about what you're doing. Think about the responsibility. And it's all right to tell the superintendent, hey, I'm not going with you. You're leading us to a road of destruction. We live here. We have to face these people. He every don't. Day. Tell him no. That's not the way you do it. We don't do wrong. We don't stand for wrong. Some of you I know. Some of you I don't know. 
But at least you had the courage to come here today and hear the truth. Because you've been hearing a bunch of lies. And I see you, Superintendent, down here. Yeah. That's yeah. enough for me. Thank you. So start your hearing. <laughs> Leave it on the floor. We want them released. Greetings. My name is Anita Sherman. I come to you today as a very concerned citizen and a parent of a student at WISD. My son has been falsely accused of assaulting a coach on October 8, 2021, during halftime at a football game. The investigation has been compromised from the very beginning, as it initially involved the brothers of head principal Richard Chandler. I present to you today, along with other concerned parents, citizens, with hopes of having a free, unborn, open comment period directed to the general public along with anyone in a position to listen. We are here again because for five long months, Wharton High School administration and Dr. O'Gwen has tried to silence us parents. We are trying to get our message out. Our voice will no longer be silenced. There are some extreme issues at WISD that needs to be addressed. The situation with the coaches and the football players was only the opening of the gateways of hell at WISD. We have been going to the school district begging them for, to take action. Asking them to work with us to keep certain curriculum out of the schools to address campus issues and most importantly, most importantly, to be firm, fair, and consistent across the board. Um, we, ask, we ask to talk to you guys in reference to policies that are very divisive, but you refuse to listen to us. Dr. O'Quinn and Mr. Chandler only listened to the special interest of those that had their ear, which was a small minority of people with whom they are affiliated with. On January 19, 2022, I emailed Dr. O'Quinn, making it clear that we plan to go before the board to address the false allegations against my son and the other two students. On February the 2nd, 2022, I formally requested to go before the board. Um, and then again on, on February the 18th, after I attended the board me meeting unannounced with, uh, with Mr. Monroe here, uh, we received an email that, that following day. A level three. That at this time we can go before the board. Level three. And which was a level three hearing. But we already had one. Dr. Wynn totally screwed that up as well because there is no such thing as two level three hearings. <clears throat> and Dr. Wynn had already conducted the level three hearing with me. So therefore, I am yet to present my case to the board. My son's entire year has been totally ruined. There are other students coming in and out of DAEP with similar, similar allegations, even more serious than that what my son is being accused are, of, and they are being released on good time. You have them coming in uh, with a 45-day sentence for carrying a knife this long as the guy described to my son in a video. He said he had a gun, this, I mean a knife this long and he got sentenced to 45 days, but he was allowed to get out in 30 days. You so run it like a prison. Here? So what precedent are we setting here? If you speak out for what's right, you may be sentenced to 10 years in prison. Five months ago, I came to the administration building and basically said, we can do this all day, every day, until this wrong is made right. And maybe you guys were not listening. Maybe you did not believe me. I asked you. Are you listening now? Do you believe me now? We the parents have had enough. We are not the problems here. Our kids are not the problems here. Dr. O'Gwen and his followers are the problem. Dr. O'Gwen, you have failed our kids. Sometimes you have to close the door to open a window. Dr. O'Gwen, it's time for you to go. Thank you. That's going to conclude our open 
session. Session, citizens' comments section. And at this time, moving right along on, on the agenda. Next up, we have agenda item number five, whereas we will convene into closed session for the purpose of consideration matters for which closed sessions are authorized by Title V, Chapter 551, Gov Texas Government Code Section .071 and .084. The I still have some time. <laughs> Pursuant to Texas Governor Code Section 551.071, consult with board counsel regarding legal issues pertaining to three parent discipline appeals. This is not how you do a level. I three. have the official time as. This is not how you do a level three. <clears throat> Uh, I have the official time is hmm. 6.54 They try to get to So, <clears throat> running this joint. this time we will be convening to close session, so. Uh, so when we come back, what's the procedure? No, I'm, I'm asking, and I don't want to seem mean, but I've done several level threes. When do you get to present your side in the level three? Oh, okay, so it's all the way at the bottom. Well, he's he's doing this one, okay. and then we're going to that one, and I've been, then I think we're coming back to the liberal. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know oh, so he's just shifting them around, basically. I, it, it, it looks like to me we're doing that one and then that one. Oh, I didn't look on the back. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I, not I, trying to turn something. No, 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 no. You're fine. I, I moved too fast. Okay. I, I, I think I understand. Okay. Hey. Thank you. That's the next Hey. Well, I'm too late, buddy. <laughs> so, you should have just put Warden ISD issues. That's what I did to be able to speak. They won't let her speak if she had some concerns. Uh, they won't let her speak if she had concerns. So, 